Hello everybody, it is time to rank the courses in Wave 5 of the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Opinion Corner. This is a series where I sit in front of a mic and ramble about whatever's on my mind today. So yeah, at the time of this recording, the Wave 5 courses has been out for two days now, and I actually have a lot to say about this wave. There's a lot of things they did right, and there's a lot of things that... So it's time to look at all of these eight courses, give my day one thoughts. Again, these aren't concrete. I think I'm going to make a video where I revisit all of these scores and then see how I feel once all of the courses are out and then compare them all together. Because I think the timing that these courses come out is also very important. Like, for example, when Toad Circuit came out, I gave it like an 8, which a lot of people disagreed with. But the reason I ranked it so high is because it fit a course archetype that I felt was not represented enough in 8. And now we have stuff like SNES Mario Circuit 3, and a ton of courses that utilize shortcuts to a really fun point like Snowland and Mushroom Gorge. And that's only naming the Wave 2 courses that did that. So yeah, with that being said, let's move on to the first course of the Feather Cup, Tor Athens Dash. Usually the first Tor courses that they add aren't substantial. Paris Promenade introduced you to the changing paths and the changing course mechanic. New York Minute was probably one of my favorites, though it repeated a lot of the course very frequently with each lap. London Loop was kind of okay, it was fine. It's got a nice length, it's got some nice shroom cuts, but not really exciting. It's hard to explain, I don't know if it's because of the visual, because it has a lot of references to the actual city, right? But there's a lot that feels missing to it. And then Amsterdam Drift, a lot of the course felt very bland, especially the underwater section, where the walls were kind of gray and empty, and the course wasn't like super crazy, but it's still good. And then we get to Athens Dash, and this is where I think they really decided to start off this wave with a high note. This track is so strong in the visual department, in the gameplay department, there is no shortage of exciting paths and variety in this course, and it takes full advantage of that. When it does repeat the courses, it doesn't feel like it overstayed its welcome. It's just a really solid and diverse introduction to the wave that makes a really strong impression. The music is great. Uh, you'll, you'll hear that a lot because this is a pattern that I noticed with the Wave 5 personally. But I think other than Sydney Sprint, this is probably one of my favorite tour uh, city courses in the past. I had a lot of fun driving it and I wasn't really expecting much out of this course because I haven't seen much of it at all before the trailer in 8. So yeah, pretty nice course. I think I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Maybe I'll rank it higher the more I play it, who knows. But yeah, really, really solid course. Next up is GCN DZ Cruiser. And yeah, I think this is the most faithful recreation of the pass. At least not counting the tour courses. It adds the extra route from 7, and it aligns you into the pool better. I think the trickable pool is new, so that's a nice touch. The dining room kept the moving tables, and it's even more bright and vibrant than the originals. And it's 7 remake, because technically the 7 remake isn't an original. I can't, depends on how you look at it. The boiler room is still there, and it keeps the clams and stuff from 7. Absolutely incredible glow up for this course. As for the layout and stuff, it's the same as usual. I don't really have much to say about it. I think it's a creative take on basing a course around the ins and outs of a cruise ship. Music's great, there's not really much to comment about this. They did the course justice, and that's worthy of an 8.5 out of 10 as well, I think. Third up, Wii Moon View Highway. This one impressed me the most, actually. Ever since I recorded the Day 1 Live First Impressions video, link on the top right, by the way, I have been time trialing this course like crazy. And after playing it a few more times with friends, I noticed a big change that I didn't notice the first time around. And the boost panels in the city part are random. On the second run through, I was going through the pattern and I'm like, oh, oh, this is different. And even during the time trial section, I noticed that the boost panels were different while I was editing. And honestly, I'm not too sure about this change. I think it adds a lot of diversity. It's sort of um, akin to Excitebike Arena, where the layout always changes online, but it's the same in uh, 
time trials, but I think the layout of the original boost panels in Wii were already really well placed. So making it more of an RNG element, all of the linings and stuff you have to take, depends on how you look at it. I think you can look at it either adapting to the route every time you try the course versus making it a consistency nightmare. There's like pros and cons to the change that it all really depends on how you feel about the course in general. But besides that, I think the course translates really well into 8. The visuals look great, the, it plays really nice, and time trialing it has been a lot of fun. So, and don't get me started on the actual music for this course. The remix, it hits. It's that good. It's really good. Probably the best one in the wave, maybe even the whole pass. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10. I just think it fits that well into the game. The way it was recreated, the way it was represented. I think, I think the boost panels are kind of like iffy for me. I guess I'll have to play it a little more to really see how much it'll change my lining every time I handle this part of the course, but we'll see. Next, squeaky clean sprint. But yeah, I had no expectations going into the course. Usually I'm more excited to see the remakes, just because I like to see new retros that haven't been represented yet get glow ups, and then see how they translate into the new engine. But new courses that we haven't seen yet are pretty exciting, like Ninja Hideaway, Merry Mountain, Yoshi's Island, those are all pretty cool picks. But honestly, I think this course is better than most Nitro courses in Base 8. It just feels like a Mario course with all the references and stuff, yet still has a creative take on something that we see every day, which is a bathroom. And I think theming helps a lot with Mario Kart courses, which is why I think that this course really nails the feeling of what a Mario Kart course should be. There's a lot of visuals and gameplay changes in here, like uh, the different path at the end, which I didn't realize until my second playthrough of it. <laughs> the track is also super diverse, with a bathtub section into the drain, then you get out of the drain, and then you go into like a soapy floor area with ice physics. There's so much variety to the course that makes it really fun to drive on. Yeah, it looks fantastic, has nice music, just everything came together to make a really cool experience. This is a 9 out of 10 for me, for sure. So yeah, Feather Cup, really good roster of courses personally, big fan. So let's move on to the Cherry Cup. And first up, another Tour City course being Los Angeles Lab. I think this tour course feels a lot different compared to all the other city courses because it doesn't take that much place in the city part. Like you got the boardwalk, which I think was a really cool uh, place to start it. Then you have the beach, you go into the city for a bit, and then you go into this like quarry area. I'm not too familiar with Los Angeles, so I'm not entirely sure what that's supposed to represent. And I think it starts off really well, but once it hits the final lap, I don't know, the visuals start to become a little bland. Like, the quarry just feels so empty. <laughs> just flat colors, and then just a few obstacles. It's a little strange, a little jarring compared to how it started off. But still, I think it's got a good length. I think it's a lot of fun still. But I think it's weaker than Athens Dash for me. It's got a lot of shroom cuts at the start, so I think it's an interesting golden spot. I don't know if you can get a golden that early, though. But yeah, this would be a really cool spot to use that. And yeah, there's not much I really have to say about this course. I think this is an 8 out of 10. It's got some good things, but I think it kind of lacks in certain departments. All right, moving on is G... All right, and following Los Angeles laps is GBA Sunset Wilds. And this one kind of disappointed me, but not for the reason that you might think. First, let's talk about the elephant in the room. It, it, there's no sunset in the Sunset Wilds. Which I thought, okay, that's kind of weird, but you know, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has kind of cut corners for some retros before. And then I learned the tour version kept the sunset, and then it's like, why didn't you port that part too? <laughs> like, it's such a weird thing to remove. And they did this with Coconut Mall too. They had the moving cars working fine in Coconut Mall in tour, which was added after it was added in 8 Deluxe. And 8 Deluxe had them stationary. It was strange to say the least, especially since I consider Tor to have a much tighter control scheme, which is why I feel like Tor makes the changes that they do. But yeah, and then the layout is 
incredibly nerfed. They really gave it the GBA Sky Garden effect where they kind of, well, no, I can't even say that because GBA Sky Garden is a completely new course. It feels like one with how much it removed the identity of the original. And then I look at this course and it just feels like Desert SNES Mario Circuit 3 in terms of layout. In the original course, there was a shortcut that you could take and skip one full bend. It's not much of a crazy shortcut in the grand scheme of things, but I think it's something like what Lakeside Park would have represented and a lot of the original GBA Sky Garden uh, shortcuts added to the course, which was a lot of opportunities to really cut corners. <laughs> no pun intended. And because of the change in the course, they removed that opportunity. And I think that's really disappointing because that was a interesting little part of the course. So they removed a lot of the stuff that made it unique. They simplified the layout when I don't think they really needed to. Like a lot of it feels very similar to GBA Mario Circuit. Like the, the changes and decisions just feels really strange overall. Visually, it feels like a SNES course compared to all the other courses that get like insane glow ups. I don't know, this one was kind of weird to me. At least the music goes hard though, I have to give it that. I think that's like the reason I would pick it. I think the song is quite fun to listen to. But yeah, if you're looking for like a comeback course or a bagging course, SNES MC3 just does it better. So many more opportunities to use Golden, so much more off-road room to use. Sunset Wilds feels like a narrowed down version of that course. In terms of gameplay, obviously the themes are completely different, but yeah, I think this is like high six, low seven. I'll give it a seven out of 10 because the music's cool. But yeah, that was uh, GBA Sunset Wilds. And this is Wii Koopa Cape, which is another course that I don't really feel like feels right. There are a lot of cool additions, I think. They made the path going into the underwater section trickable, which just feels right. It feels like a part where you can trick at, so it makes sense. And then I learned that it's completely obsolete because drifting into it is faster. <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's talk about the elephant in the room again, the electric spinners. They aren't in the game. Um, they aren't in the course. They, I feel like that's the one thing you think about this course because it's such a game changer at the end. Can you make it through all three of them? All four of them, excuse me, unscathed and untouched while they're making that mad dash for the finish line. It added a lot of tense moments in there, but now the underwater section feels more like a visual treat. I don't know if I'm the only one that feels this way. Like, I know this course is really popular, so I don't know if people are just happy that this course is in in the first place, or if they were hoping to see everything come back in the course. I don't know. Koopa Cape fans, let me know in the comments below what you think about this course. Are you happy it's in at all, or do you wish there's a little more? Removing that removes so much of the difficulty to the course, and it makes it feel that much more plain. And then the course feels a lot, like, cramped. Everything feels smaller, more narrow. Like, on one hand, it helps keep the course feel more compact, but at the same time, especially with like 12 people, the latter half of the course can feel pretty hectic. I think this is most explicit with the uh, rapid section of the course. The water stream feels so much smaller and it feels a lot tighter to drive on, but maybe this is just like day one first impressions. Maybe this is just something that you need practice over time. But even then it feels like there's not a lot of room to play around in that section compared to Wii and even 7. I was uh, looking at Mario Kart 7 and the Rapids part feels so much livelier in that version. Meanwhile, here it just feels more jarring. Like the cliff sides, they stand out so much. It's weird because I'm not a graphics or visual person, but it's here that it really stood out to me like a sore thumb. That being said, with all of the negatives said and done, the music is the best. I think it does so much justice to the original. It makes it so much better. It's great. Every single portion of the course feels upgraded in terms of the music, especially the rapid section. I love the rapid section part of the song a lot. In the original, it didn't really add all that much to the song, but now it really gives it more of an identity. So yeah, that's my thoughts on We Koopa Cape in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Honestly, 7.5 out of 10. I think the music saves a lot of it. I think it makes it feel great. But again, you're not going to be appreciating the visuals and the music a lot. You're going to be hoping you make it to the end of the course. You're going to want to drive on it and have fun doing it, right? And I think this is where this course kind of lacks. 
my, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Because I'm genuinely curious about this course in particular. What people thought. Because everyone wanted this course. This was the course that people wanted to see alongside Maple Treeway. These two are like the most popular Wii courses in Wii and 7. There is a reason why they brought this back twice. Three times if you include Tor. Because again, I'm not trying to like bash on the course. I am curious on perspectives for people that like this course way more than I do. So yeah, let's move on to the final course in the way of Tor Vancouver Velocity. First off, the visuals, I think it gives a lot of a seasonal feel to it. The start is very wintry and snowy, which, you know, haha, Canada cold moment. <laughs> it starts off super crazy. It's got this really cool anti-graph bridge section. The winter forest looks great, but maybe that's just my ice track and my night track bias. <laughs> but then I feel like the course kind of falls off for the next two laps. I like the, the underground tunnel section, but then some parts of the city and the skating rink didn't really stand out to me. It was just okay. This course also felt very front runny. You get one shop dodge, you make it into first, and then you just run it home. And you guys probably have heard me talk to death about what I feel about front running courses in Market 8 Deluxe. So yeah, I think the visuals have a lot of things going for it. I never really thought much about the music, which is what a lot of people wanted to see this in the past four. Like I think this and Berlin Byways, a lot of people really wanted to hear those tracks in the game. But Vancouver Velocity doesn't really stand out to me, which is funny because... <laughs> So yeah, nothing really to say about this course. I think it's a 7.5 out of 10. I think this is the weakest one. I don't think it's a bad course in any means. I just think in what I'm looking for in a course, compared to all the other courses that we've gotten in the past, let alone this wave, I think it's just missing a couple things to really nail it. Actually, you know what? I like the first lap a lot more than I thought I'd. I think that's enough to give it an 8. I think 8 is fine. Oh no, because you're going to play most of the course in like lap 2 and 3 where it really matters. So 7.5, 7.75. This is going to be the first quarter score I'm going to give in this entire series. 7.75, 7.76 out of 10. I might as well round it up to the funny number. Alright, so since there's more things to talk about in the past, we're gonna make this another overview. Hopefully this isn't gonna be 30 minutes. So far the recording has been 40 minutes long, and the last overview video was an hour of talking, so let's move on to talking about the characters. So people have played on way far enough to really let the dust settle and figure out who the best characters in the game are. So it seems like Rosalina, King Boo, and Link dropped off in the meta a little bit. Still very solid characters, of course. I think they're very viable in their own right. But it seems like the midweights have taken over with their Teddy Buggies and their Ink Strikers. Yoshi Teddy Buggy being a favorite among a lot of people, which I'm kind of mixed on because... Yoshi has the same stats as Daisy, and suddenly my character went from the worst best meta pick to the best. <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of like the recap of what I know about Wave 4 and that meta. So let's see how the Wave 5 balance changes, changes things a little. Obviously, it seems like they wanted to make the heavies better because they started to feel kind of outclassed in Wave 4 with all the nerfs that they got from prior patches with the invincibility frames. They're still very good. They were just power crept. So what did Nintendo do? They gave the heavies a ton of iframes. And for some reason, they decided to give <laughs> the fastest characters in the game the most iframes in the entire game, I think. Yeah, because they share the same stats as, like, the Royal Babies, which is like an iframe stat of four. Probably to make up for the fact that they added two heavies in this wave, Petey Piranha and Wiggler. First, let's talk about Kamek, though, because I meant to segue it originally, but then I kind of got sidetracked. Because, like I said, midweights seem to be the best in the game so far. We got the Yoshi group, which is dominating the meta, it seems. But there are also some other meta picks that are just as viable, I think, such as the Luigi and Mario weight types. And Kamek falls under the Luigi weight type. So already a very strong start for the welcome back for Kamek. He's already a top tier threat. <laughs> Meanwhile, Wiggler shares the same stats as Waluigi, Roy, and DK, the OG best characters in the game. So Wiggler on Wiggler would have been top tier had it not been for the power creeps and changes. Peter Piranha, on the other hand, uh, shares the same stats as the metal characters. So yeah, it really seems like they're trying to fill in archetypes, characters that only have like two reps 
like Luigi and Iggy, they just threw Kamek in there. Metal Mario and Pink Gold Peach, they threw Petey in there. Also, I should probably explain now that um, I am just a guy. <laughs> Do not take my word as like fact. This is just speculation on my end as someone who kind of dabbles in both the casual and competitive side of Mario Kart. Again, I'm kind of just sitting in front of my mic and I'm kind of just rambling, so. <laughs> and yeah, I'm not sure where Petey is gonna place. I think Petey will still be fine, definitely usable, just a little harder to use than the others. Probably needs to work a little harder. But again, I feel like a lot of Mario Kart is dictated around item use. So if you know how to use your items fine, Petey. Petey fans, you can still sweep. <laughs> Other buffs include some vehicle changes, and they also buffed some of the midweights that were kind of lacking in stats, like a lot of the crossover characters to be more specific. So yeah, with that, they kind of even out with the current meta picks, which is like Yoshi. They just have a couple things going against them, them being the Tanuki Mario group, but now they can definitely compete a lot easier. For wheel buffs, there's not much there. They buffed the worst ones in the game, probably just to make the gap a little smaller. And the vehicles, Pipe Frame, Streetle, and Tanuki Kart seem to be in the talks right now, so we'll see where that goes. You know, we will just have to see where that goes. Which is why I think Day One Thoughts are so interesting, because, well, people thought Rosalina Teddy Buggy was gonna take over the meta. It's always interesting to see how the game changes over time, just with more people playing and testing things. So I'm interested to see where it goes from here. So yeah, TLDR, they buffed the heavies very carefully, picking iframes out of everything so that they didn't mess too much with time trial stats, and just tried to make them a little more viable and nicer to use online. Even though it's a hidden stat, and a lot of people are probably not going to know this information until unless you're looking for it, or you have some nerd like me talking about it to you. So yeah, that's going to be it for this overview. I am 51 minutes in, so I'm going to leave you guys off at that. Thank you guys so much for listening. Let me know in the comments what you think about the past, what do you think about the characters, what do you think about the buffs? There were also nerfs, but it doesn't really seem like they did too much besides try to hammer down the midweights. I think they're just trying to like close things together instead of making other characters worse for the sake of others, which I think is a nice balancing decision. But yeah, interested in hearing your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to sub to the main channel for more content. Sub to the second channel for more extra content. Bunch more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe stuff coming your way on the main channel with one out right now where I live reacted to the Wave 5 courses. So yeah, that's gonna be it. See you guys in the next one. Take care.